Have you ever wondered how people were able to dye things blue in the Middle Ages? How William Wallace painted those blue stripes on his face? Well, if you're wondering how to take something like this and turn it into this, the answer is woad. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I was able to grow woad myself in my very own backyard so that I'll be able to do more of this and make some pretty fantastic things. So it's the beginning of the video, but the end of my journey in year one. As you can see behind me, this is my woad garden. It is August 20th. We are a good four months into the growth of my woad garden. We've already gotten one full clippings from the bottom and the top rows, and we will be processing all three rows in the next day or two. But I wanted to just kind of go over what I went through, some of the things that I learned and some of the problems that I ran into and also some of the exciting things that I learned along the way. The first is that woad grows, I guess this shouldn't be a surprise since it's known to be a noxious weed, but it grows incredibly fast and incredibly heartily. I found that I was seeing small buds that were popping through the soil within two weeks of planting and we had a bit of a frost that first weekend after I planted the seeds. So within two weeks, I saw small buds. Within a month, month and a half, I saw beautiful growth. By the time we were in the middle of June to the end of June, we were able to get our first full clipping of at least the top and bottom rows, which I've mentioned before, came from Amazon. I will link below where I got those seeds from. The middle row, I got those seeds from a friend who gave me her seeds from her very own garden. And so I planted those separately and kept those separate so that I could sort of compare and contrast what the yield is. I don't know what that answer is yet. You'll see that in the next video about processing woad. However, I did want to note that the seeds that I got from my friend did grow a little bit slower, but I'm very curious to see because those leaves appear to be more of a bluish greenish hue. So I'm very curious to see what the yield is going to be. Uh, really, there are only two problems that I encountered in doing this garden. The first problem that I encountered was that I was seeing lots of little holes on some of my leaves, and that was probably from slugs or other pests that were eating through the leaves themselves. Two solutions were suggested to me by some friends. The first was that I use uh, eggshells that I crunched up and I put between because especially slugs do not like to crawl over those surfaces. And that actually seemed to work really, really incredibly well. The challenge with that is if you have to eat enough eggs or at least smash enough eggshells to have that going on a fairly regular basis. Because those things will also get um, eaten or t uh, taken away by other pests. They will also degrade over time and sometimes just rain will wash them away. So you do have to constantly renew that. The other solution that was suggested to me is that if you get some raw, unprocessed fleece and you put it on the garden floor or the bed of the garden between the plants, that it will actually also prevent pests from getting in and eating up your leaves as well. However, I didn't have too much of that going on, so I wasn't terribly concerned about it. But technically, it is a loss of some real estate and obviously, therefore, some loss of potential pigment. I don't think too much. I think fairly negative overall. But I did want to mention that was one problem that I didn't expect to see that I did encounter this first year with my wood garden. The second problem was actually one of my own doing and that was because it is recommended that you try to process the woad when it has been sunny for several days in a row. Well by the time I had done my first processing and was waiting for it to regrow for a good second processing I got into a very busy state of things and so balancing those really busy days with days where there had been enough sun that I felt comfortable taking it, just has been a little bit of a hassle. So we're about two weeks past where I was hoping to do my second processing. And in the meantime, I have had some leaves die on the very bottom here. You can see, we lift up, you can see some down there that have started to die. Again, I'm losing real estate, I'm losing pigment with every leaf that, that dies. Is that the absolute end of the world? I don't think so, but it is something to consider. You need to try to make sure that you have enough time so that you can successfully and effectively harvest those leaves when you can. Um, for the most part, I actually weeded out anything that was not uh, woad. I did allow these beautiful flowers back here that popped up just in the last couple of weeks to grow because they were pretty and they didn't seem to be impacting the health and the hardiness of the woad itself. 
speaking of the hardiness of woad, woad itself is considered a noxious plant in many, many states. So it is important that you check to see whether or not your state is one of them. Fortunately, I live in a state where you are able to plant, grow, and harvest woad. So that was not a problem for me. Additionally, according to the USDA, my plant hardiness zone, for those of you, of you out there curious, is hardiness zone 6. 6A to be precise. And so this is actually a wonderful uh, zone to grow woad in. Furthermore, we had a lot, a lot of sun. Probably not much more than I would say in average years, um, but certainly on the upper end of the average, if not on certain days, a little bit above average. And we did have above average rain throughout our season, which was really good. On the days that we didn't have rain for two to four days, I made sure to get out there and was watering. So lots and lots of sun, lots and lots of water made for an effective and very, very hardy, robust garden that I'm very, very pleased with. I did do one processing of woad, and I'll give you a little bit of a hint. I was successful in processing the woad. <laughs> I was worried that I would not be. I was also worried that I might not get enough woad out of my first year's garden, but it looks like we might. Fingers crossed. Here you can see my garden. So up there, we have a plant. Then right there, we have a plant. Then right there, we have a plant. And if we pan over, right there, we have a plant. So they're all spaced 12 to 18 inches away or so, right there. And now I'm going to go ahead and cover them all with dirt. I put just a little bit of a little bit of water in each hole. And I'm just going to sort of lightly cover. I'm definitely not going to pack it down in. But I am going to make sure that the seeds themselves are covered so they won't blow away. going to go ahead and pause because I want to get some sticks to mark where I planted things so I'll know what's plant and what's weed. Do you guys see those little plants there to the left of the shell? And guess what that is? That is woad. We've got a couple of them popping up. Let me see if I can find them over here. Yes. Oh, little baby one's over here. You see him right there? There's my wood. I'm so excited. Let's see if there's more. Oh, there's more over here. Yay! It is April 27th. It is officially exactly two weeks since I planted these. Let's see if we get more. <gasps> little one's here. <laughs> I'm so excited. I've got woad growing, guys. Ooh, it looks like I got some random ones over here, not in an area where I planted. Generally speaking, I tried to put my shells to the right. So here, you see some up there. My shell kind of shifted. We've got, we've got woad, people. This is exciting. I am not good at this at all. Let's see. Right here. <laughs> and I've got some, you know, random grass or, uh, I think we have some wild onion. Ooh, a random nail. I found like five or six of these while I was tilling the garden. So I'm actually going to use these for dyeing as well. I'm going to crunch off the, uh, the uh, rust on it and use it as a sadden, a saddener to sadden the pot. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> little baby wood plants. Yay! I'm out here gardening today. It is Thursday, May 27th, I think. And I have weeded through most of it. But I wanted to show you how I weed. See these little patch of clover here and a couple other things? I wait until the dirt is really dry, and I gotta be careful because that's actually woad. But I wait until the dirt is really dry. And then I just kind of do that so that I can pluck them out 
by their roots. It's a lot easier just kind of dig them out. So hopefully they will not grow back at all, or at least as fast. That's what I think. Lots of clover. I am keeping my eyes out for four leaf ones, but no luck so far in this garden. See how easy you just kind of dig around. And that also means this dirt probably really shouldn't be that dry. So I will water immediately after this, though we have had a pretty good rainy week, so I'm not terribly worried about the health of this garden. Here's the status of my garden. It's a little over a month. We're looking at about six weeks. Started April 13th, and today is May 27th. You can see all of the lovely stuff that I pulled out. Hey, look, there's my shadow. But these are my wood plants, and they're going to get watered today. The ones on the top and bottom rows are the seeds from Amazon. The one in the middle rows are from Arena. And then over here, really, for the most part, nothing is grown. I think part of it is because the shadow gets cast. A couple of plants over here might be. I don't think that's woad, but I'm leaving them. That's definitely not woad. Not with those pink stems. And not with those fuzzy leaves. So, maybe? I'll see as they get bigger. Don't remember now what they look like when they're so this side is not growing so much i'm not too terribly worried about that but here is the rest so behind me you can see my woad it has been growing since april 13th and today is june 19th so it's a little over two months and we've had lots and lots of sun as well as lots of rain um, as you can see underneath some of these plants, I have some leaves that are starting to actually die, which is part of the reason why I want to go ahead and start extracting the woad now. It is August 18th, so we are about four months of growing. And there are three rows of woad, as you can see. Maybe it's so overgrown. So the top row and the bottom row have each had one cutting. The middle row has not because it was growing much slower than the other. So I kind of left that one to go. I did leave those pretty little flowers there. Let me back up a little so you can see it. And you can see this is... Four months of growth with one clipping of the big plants in the front and the back. And this is what we have so far. Furthermore, I have to consider what I'm going to do about next year's uh, crop. On one hand, for science, I absolutely want to let these come back. I want to be able to harvest those seeds and keep them separately if I find that there is a distinct difference in the yield. Uh, and then decide kind of where I go from there. And I want to see what is the yield going to be from next year's plants. From everything I read and from everybody I talked to, the yield from the second year is going to be far, far less than the first year. So the other recommendation that has been given to me is that I yank all these plants out at the end of this year. I do not let them go to seed next year. And I just plant a bunch of new ones next year. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any more seeds from my friend um, that gave me for the second or middle row but I do have more from the Amazon um, distributor. However, I'm a for science kind of girl, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna let at least most of these plants continue on to next year. I'll let them bolt to seed. I will harvest those seeds and I'll give away some of those seeds, but you guys gotta wait another year. Um, at least I'll do that for the top and bottom rows, which were extremely successful. If I find that there's a very little um, result or yield from the middle row, then I may not worry about letting those go to seed next year. I may actually pull those out. Interestingly, the taproot of load is known to be sometimes as long or as deep as five to seven feet. 
I'm really hoping that that's not the case because that's going to be a whole lot of work to try to, to get out. Uh, but I've been very, very pleased with this. Now, let me give you a couple of hopeful things for you to digest. I do not have a green thumb. I am not good with plants. I have been known to kill house plants many, many, many times. The amount of work that I put into this garden is probably more work than I put into any other garden. And so this little city girl was very um, surprised and bemused by how much work a good garden really takes. But that work wasn't even that much. It was just more than I'm obviously used to giving outdoor plants. I would say that probably an hour uh, every two to three weeks I would spend out here for the first two months making sure to pull any other plants that were definitely not woed. This area here had a whole bunch of stuff, none of which I could identify to you, uh, that I obviously tried to pull out and yank out and till out before I even planted it, but definitely some things were still there as the wood was starting to pop up. So about an hour, every two to three weeks, I would come and I would be yanking anything that wasn't wood. I also made sure to mark where my wood should be coming up. I initially was hoping to do it with sticks, but I had to do it with shells because I couldn't find sticks and shells were readily abundant. So I knew exactly which things were my wood and which things weren't. And I also started to become able to recognize, okay, Woad does not have a fuzzy leaf. It has more of a waxy texture. It doesn't have any coloration to the stems or the, the bottom of the plant. It is all green, and it tends to come up in, like, threes. I don't know if I'm describing that well, but maybe I'll insert some pictures so you can see what I'm talking about. So overall, I'm very pleased. There was very little work, very little learning curve. I lived in an area in which I had great success, and we had a beautiful, wonderful season. So that was sort of... The cosmos is smiling upon me. I don't know that I can take great credit for that. But overall, not very difficult. A little bit of work, lots of patience, lots of sunshine, which you can't control, but lots of watering, which you can. So that's it. I'm going to do a second processing, as I mentioned before. I'm going to go ahead and let it grow for about another month, month and a half, so that somewhere in the end, by the middle or end of September, I will have done my third harvest. And then I'm going to be done at least worrying too much. If I get a lot of growth after that, I might actually try my hand at couching some woad and making woad balls. I'm not sure that I have any idea what I'm doing with that, but yay research. But in the meantime, I just wanted to give you a quick update as to what it took to make my own woad garden. As you can see from all the clips that are in this video, I worked with a pretty small space. I made sure to work with a space that was enclosed so that it hopefully wouldn't spread everywhere, although I don't know if that would have been such a bad idea, but I think Lothar would not be very pleased with me about that. Um, but that is also to contain it because it is a noxious weed, even though legal in the state, I just didn't want it growing everywhere or getting into the neighbor's yards, for example. And um, and really was fairly simple all, all, all in all. I will tell you, processing was a whole different story, was a lot more nerve-wracking and a lot more to it. So make sure to subscribe, click the bell for notifications so that you'll be notified whenever I upload content like this, and you will definitely get notified then of my very interesting and long series on how to process your road. For now, thank you very much. Bye!